Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to N5D Radio's Cosmic Awakening Show, where we are serving this galaxy and beyond. My name is Michelle Walling, and I'm with N5D.com, and my goal is to reach as many people as possible with a database of articles, videos, and radio shows that will help aid you in your spiritual awakening. At the Cosmic Awakening Show, we encourage you to question everything. And I'd like to give a very special thanks to my sponsor, Greg Prescott from N5D.com, which is the world's hottest esoteric, metaphysical, and spiritual database on the Internet. And Greg is also the webmaster for our sister site, BodyMindSoulSpirit.com. And I also have a website called CosmicStarseeds.com, where you can find all of my articles that I've written, um, all of my radio shows, and all of my videos. And if you'd like to look into booking a holistic life coach session with me, you can find out more information at michellewalling.com. And you can also find every episode of this show, The Cosmic Awakening Show, on N5D's iTunes page. And I also have a website called howtoexitthematrix.com for more of the esoteric studies of the quantum aspects of our reality, where we go deep down into the rabbit hole to uncover some of the things that we've been lied to about and to spread the truth about uh, what people need to know. And I have a few more announcements before we get into our show. Um, I'm very excited. I've, I've just been in very creative mode the last three days. Um, I have a few new articles, one on bodymindsoulspirit.com and one on n5d.com, but um, or I'm sorry, how to exit the matrix.com. I can't keep up with them lately here. But um, what I really have been working on, those articles, you know, they take a couple hours to write and get published. So I'm back into the groove of writing, and I'm really happy to to be doing that. But um, I also have a website um, with Greg called N5D Marketplace. And uh, we what we do is we provide a community for people to um, to check out in 5D approved products and services. And also, you know, if you have something to sell, some kind of service or um, some kind of uh, product or a book, or let's say you're um, a psychic or you're a healer um, and you would like to submit your information to me for review, um, you can go to n5dmarketplace.com and check out the um, requirements. Now, the blog ads are free. So all you have to do is format it for me. Either give me the web page you want me to copy or send me a Word document with a lot of pictures and, you know, just just as if you were writing an article for N5D and something easy where I can cut and paste. Or I can create your blog ad for you based on um, what you would like for uh, a small fee. And um, if you would like to place a three-month ad with us, you can make a donation um, to have an ad on our home page. But pretty much you can get get into this for free with a blog ad. And this is all in support of all the people who have reached out to me uh, over the last couple of years wanting to know if I would support their efforts in trying to move from the corporate world into their own practice or whatever it is that they're selling and if we would support them. So here it is, folks. Take advantage of it and check it out and um, be sure and share it with people. Now, secondly, another thing that I've done, I'm a crazy woman here. I have another website called N5D Shop. And right now, I have over 300 ebooks in there for you to browse metaphysical, spiritual. There's some Wicca in there. There's some yoga. There's some uh, vegetarian 
uh, living. There's all kinds of great stuff at really cheap prices. Uh, and this is just to add to the database of information that we're providing for your spiritual awakening. So check out n5dshop.com. And um, the third thing I wanted to talk about that I'm also really excited about is our N5D Superpower Activation Conference, um, February 20th here in Sarasota, Florida. We are two miles away from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands Beach of Siesta Key. And the, the conference is actually in a really nice place just down the street. Um, tickets are going quick. So get on n5devents.com, which is another website I run, and get your tickets and get your hotel room as soon as possible because it seems to be a very busy time here in Florida in February. Um, and also, if you can't make that and you do live here, we are having a harmonic emergence meditation on the beach um, a couple of hours before the free public drum circle. Uh, on February 21st, and we'd sure like to have you join in and put your attentions together to send out unconditional love to the planet and to the human collective consciousness so we can get this ball rolling. <laughs> we want to get into the fifth dimension. So this week's topic is the law of attraction, and our guest tonight is N5D contributing author Andrea Schulman. And if you'd like to ask a question tonight to myself or Andrea, or if you have a comment and you want to call in, I think it'd be interesting to talk to you. The phone number is area code 646-716-8890. Be sure and press 1 to let me know that you would like to speak with us. Otherwise, I'll just think that you're listening. Andrea Schulman is a former high school psychology teacher and the creator of RaiseYourVibrationToday.com, which provides free and easy law of attraction techniques. Uh, go to, if you want to go to N5D.com, and if you type in Andrea's last name, Schulman, Schulman, S-C-H-U-L-M-A-N, in the search button, you'll find about 25 absolutely fabulous, very detailed articles to help aid you in your spiritual awakening for very uh, a very large range of topics as well. Andrea is one of the uh, first writers that I that I brought on. Um, we were having that conversation before the show. I couldn't remember if she came on before I did or not. And um, she has the energy and the explanation uh, that just matches N5D perfectly, and we're so proud to have her. So, Andrea, welcome finally to my Cosmic Awakening show. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And I kind of didn't turn the microphone on. <laughs> I, I heard, I'm so excited to be here, so I apologize for that. I got so oh, excited no I forgot to push the button. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here and, now, uh, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's um, you actually are here in Florida as well um, on uh -huh. the other coast, and uh, we yep. were just talking about having a, a meetup, an N5D meetup sometime in, the, in early May or in mm -hmm. June, and so I really look forward to planning that with you and coming to those of you who are on the Florida East Coast around Orlando area, I believe, is where we'll probably have it. So all, all those of you that didn't make it to Tarpon Springs, um, you can meet up with, I think Andrea will be my, my guest, and if we can make the date work. And then I also wanted to say real quick that I am going to have a uh, Fort Myers event sometime in, uh, I believe, um, April. So I'm going to make the, the triangle circle <laughs> around Florida. <laughs> so, Andrea, um, I, I told the audience a little bit about you, um, but I would like to start at the beginning for a few minutes, if you would, and just sure. if you could explain uh, what happened in your life that caused you to basically quit your job as a high school psychology teacher, which must have been one of the hardest jobs being a high school teacher, 
and this type of awakening, <laughs> you know, with the indoctrination and things, mm-hmm, the things yeah, that they're teaching, uh-huh. and it's especially in psychology as well. I mean, um, that was yeah. that's probably one of my favorite topics besides um, oh, yeah. geology in high, in high school. So, how did you mm-hmm. become, you know, a webmaster? You had to learn how to create your own website, the Raise Your Vibration Today. And how did you yeah. get into um, after after that? You can kind of ease us into how you began to teach the law of attraction because apparently you used it to get to where you are today. <laughs> well, yeah, um, sure. It's actually you know I could start from from the time of teaching, but I think I'm going to go back a few years just to get okay. some clarity. Um, when I was I would say like 18 or 19 years old. You know, I had all these questions about, you know, what does it all mean? What's the universe about? You know, all these interesting kinds of questions that I think, you know, a lot of your viewers and listeners are very interested in. But I was in a place of really wanting to understand, you know, what's this all about? What, what's really going on? And at the time, I was in college, and I was having, I was with my roommate, we were having one of those really philosophical conversations about, you know, what does it all mean? And she had asked me a question about, you know, which religion do you think is the right religion? And for some reason in that moment, I just thought to myself, I said, you know what, I've learned a lot. I know a lot about religions. I can figure this out. For some reason, I just thought I would know the answer. I don't know why, but I just thought I'd figure it out. And it was very weird because in that moment of expectation, I just had this flash of insight. I can't, you know, it's like an aha moment, like they call in teaching, you know, where everything just kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, I just kind of, my mind kind of opened up to this idea that, you know, what's really going on is really like mathematics. You know, we have an infinite sea of possibilities. We live in a universe that's all, you know, it's all one thing, but it can be broken down into an infinitesimal amount of parts. And where we are in the universe is simply a cross section of time and space. But there's like an infinite number of realities we could be in, an infinite number of outcomes we could have, an infinite number of places that we could travel to. That was just my moment of clarity. Didn't really do much with it, but I thought about that a lot for a few years. It really kind of resonated with me. It was just an idea that came to me. Many years later, you know, after I finished college, got some jobs, got my teaching job, um, had my daughter... Um, I was still teaching, and, you know, I'd gotten to a place in life where, you know, I really wanted to be a teacher, and there were a lot of things that I liked about teaching, but I just felt fairly unfulfilled, like I wasn't really doing something that made my heart sing, or that I was, like, stuck, that I was going to be stuck doing the same thing for the next 20 or 30 years, stuck living in the same place, that my life was just kind of on pause, and it was going to stay that way. And fortunately, as teachers, we get breaks. You know, that's the one thing that, that's great about teaching is you get, like, your winter break and your summer break. And over mm-hmm. the winter break, I told myself, I'm like, you know what, I've got this winter break. I'm going to figure out, I'm going to figure out what's going to happen to me. I've got to figure out where I'm going, what I'm going to do with my life. And it was a lot like that moment when I was 18. I just told myself I'm going to figure it out. And for some reason, I believed I was going to figure it out. So we go on winter break and, you know, everyone's doing all the holiday stuff. And for the first week of break, all I'm doing is wrapping presents and baking cookies and doing all this very normal, you know, mom kind of stuff. Don't really put any effort whatsoever in trying to figure out this big change that's going to, that I want to facilitate in my life. And, you know, after some of this goes on for a few days, I sit down in front of the TV and I'm like, you know what? I really want to figure out what I wanted to figure out. I wanted to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm like, I, I don't know what to think. I'm like, you know what? Let me just watch Netflix. I'm just going to turn on Netflix and just, you know, whatever. So I turn on Netflix I do that. and I'm scrolling through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, they lots of good documentaries. And so I'm looking at the documentary section, and all of a sudden I see the documentary The Secret. And I read the explanation of it, and it's like, oh, you know, how you can – create all the things that you want in your life. I'm like, well, that kind of sounds like what I was going for when I sat down, so let me go ahead and watch this. And I know the secret doesn't really speak to everybody. It's kind of like a very simplistic explanation of the law of attraction, if you've seen it before. But for me, it was simple enough to where it really made something click in my mind, and it kind of pieced together for me that moment I had had when I was 18 to the moment that was going on right then. And the idea that with the law of attraction, you can really create whatever you want in your life with your consciousness, 
all of a sudden it kind of made sense to me that, okay, well, if we live in an infinite universe and there's infinite outcomes and infinite places that I could go, the way that I traveled to a different place is simply through my consciousness and my thoughts. And that really spoke to me. So I just got really excited about that, started learning more about it, started learning about the importance of raising your vibration, which we can get more into in a few minutes, but really applied a lot of the principles of it for a while. So I didn't make any change right away. I didn't leave my job right away. I just started to clean up my life and started to create better things in my life. And this went on for a few years, and I still wanted to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, but it took a while for me to get to that point where the answer clicked. And just like before, it came as an aha moment. One day I was sitting there teaching class. I was enjoying the teaching, and I just thought, you know, I always like teaching. I want to teach this. This is what I want to teach, and I want to, you know, be one of those resources that I've been reaching out to. And it just hit me, and the path lit up, and everything lined up, and it was a fairly easy transition. I wouldn't say it's been all easy. There's been issues, and there's been hardships and struggles, but I've always kind of stayed. The path has been there for me. I just keep walking down it, and that's that's kind of where I, I've ended up now. I ended up quitting my job. Um, figuring out, don't ask me how now, I have no idea why why or how I managed to figure out how to make a website because I didn't know anything about that whatsoever <laughs> before. <laughs> but I guess when, you're, when you are divinely inspired, you just kind of get carried through the process, and that's that's what happened to me. So that's my story mm-hmm. in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'm on website number five now, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was – because of you helping me, you know, move one of my sites to a different server, that really helped because I was having some issues. Do you issues. love them? So Do you love them? It's like, They're so great. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's like the blind leading the blind. But, yeah, yeah well, you, <laughs> well, you had to pick, you know, a topic, the law of attraction, and, you know, to basically share and teach, you know, and the way that uh, mentors work is they have to go through this situation in their own life others um you know with right. personal experience and so um so but i think it's really cool because you have a lot more knowledge than just the law of attraction so we'll talk about that at the end of the show what other things that you're into because you're you've just got a lot of stuff going on but i wondered i wanted to give the audience uh if we may have a, a few people who are uh, newly awakened and are trying to um you know get this terminology down what exactly would you define as the law of attraction? Is this a like a, a universal uh, law, or what is this mm-hmm. law of attraction? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a universal law that basically governs the way that reality is constructed. And a lot of times the way that it's explained is that people will say, well, the law of attraction means that thoughts create things. And so if I think about something, I can create it in my reality. And on some level, that's true, but I, I prefer to say that the law of attraction is really that you get what you believe or that you get what you expect. And so if I have an expectation that I'm going to be very rich, and it's a true expectation, I believe in it, I'm going to be guided to a reality that becomes very abundant and prosperous. If I, on the other hand, have an expectation that I'm poor and I'm always going to be poor, I will be guided into a reality of poverty. If I have an expectation that I'm going to find the love of my life, that will, that will manifest itself into my reality. If I have an expectation that I'm going to be single for the rest of my life, that will manifest itself into my reality. Um, so it's just this idea that, or it's this, this law, that is really your consciousness and what your consciousness expects is what manifests into your reality. And the thing about it that's kind of tricky is that there's a lot of things going on in your reality. Like right now, you know, we're listening to this conversation. We're sitting in a chair. We're sitting in a particular room. We're dressed in a particular outfit. We have a very specific set of circumstances in our reality right this moment that are very specific and very detailed and very small. And so sometimes it's a little challenging for people to understand that everything that's in your reality all the little details, everything on some level is being projected from your consciousness and being manifested into your reality as something for you to live and experience. And so the idea is really that you have a great deal of power 
to create your life and direct your life in the direction that you want it to go. And a lot of people aren't aware of this. They just kind of run through life reacting to circumstances and not really challenging their beliefs. And therefore, they can't really reach for new things or go for the things that they really want because they've never really encouraged themselves to believe in their dreams and believe in the direction that they want to move in. Now, do you think that the law of attraction will work for you only if you have set up like in your life before you came into this incarnation, you made particular contracts and had certain things that you were going to do. Do you think it, it, it only lines up with that or do you think that you can actually change that? Yeah. You know, that's actually a question I've thought about a lot. On on the one hand, I like to think that, again, we live in an infinite universe, so anything is possible. So my inclination would tell me that regardless of where you started in this life, you could stumble onto this concept and you could make it work for you. The other part of me thinks that a lot of this has to do with the momentum of energy and getting prepared to be able to understand this information. And perhaps a previous lifetime Um, may have prepared you to be a little bit closer and to actually realizing it and setting into motion in your life. So that's actually something I've thought about quite a bit. I would, I would venture to say that, you know, previous incarnations probably do have a great deal of influence over what's going on in this one, Mm -hmm. but there's still, there's still the odds that you could stumble upon it. If it were something that you, you know, chose to kind of investigate during this lifetime if that makes sense. It does. It does. And, you know, Greg, um, actually, the secret is um, what's responsible. The secret and Greg's daughter is what's responsible for the creation of N5D. Um, He saw the secret and it changed his life. And uh, he immediately uh, knew what he, you know, needed to start doing. And he actually downloaded the name of the website in 5D, just like you had your aha moment. He had his as well. So the secret did play a very strong role. And I know that another, um, another really good resource is Jerry and Esther Hicks for people listening out there who are looking for some, uh, some really deep explanation, but you know, um, they've been around for quite a while, and the secret actually has been around for quite a while too. And I know yeah. that what you're going to bring to the table is, um, you know, some of the things that we had um, in our that we've used in our past in our toolbox. They need to be modified for the newer energies that are here now. So I know that mm-hmm. you'll be working on that, and uh, probably will be writing some articles on that soon. Um, so, yeah, you probably have a, if I were to guess, a mixture of the secret and Hicks and your own higher self. Absolutely. All twirled yeah. into there. Lots uh, of but, features and lots of information. Yeah, once, once I've, like I said, I've always been interested in this kind of phenomenon, so I've always kind of been poking around in this area. But, yeah, Abraham Hicks, awesome. Secret, Awesome. Um, lots of other teachers out there too. So the good news is, is that we live in a time and an age where this information is available for people that are asking the questions. So it's out there. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, many people um, uh, are having uh, difficulties manifesting with the law of attraction. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then they kind of go, well, that's just a bunk- bunch of crap. That didn't work for yeah. me. And they kind of give up. Um, what would what would right. you say would be the number one reason that the law of attraction fails for people? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's there's a couple of things that I think are really paramount to this question. So I would say there's for me, I found there's there's like a top two. Okay, the first thing that I think people struggle with with the law of attraction is that they get very, very, very hung up on the one thing they want to attract. So they hear about the law of attraction, they see the secret or they see Abraham Hicks or, or whatever. And they're introduced to the law of attraction. They think, okay, well, I'm going to use this to attract lottery winnings. Okay. And they get really excited about it and they really try and they put a lot of effort into it. And they spend a lot of time worrying about when is it going to show up? When is it going to happen? Is it, why hasn't it come yet? Am I doing something wrong? Should I do a different kind of affirmation? Should I do a meditation? Should I do a vision board for this? 
and they get very concerned about this one particular manifestation. And in their concern and in their double checking and in their constant looking back to see if it's shown up, what they're subconsciously doing is they're projecting a message out to the universe that says, I don't believe that this is coming. I don't, when is it going to come? It's not coming yet. It's not coming yet. It's not coming yet. And so the universe matches that belief and doesn't let it come. So even though they're directing their thought and they're trying to be positively expectant, their hyper focus on the situation creates kind of this situation where they're, they're meaning to attract it, but what they're actually doing is pushing it away. And so a lot of times people just give up, you know, because they're like, well, it's just not working. I tried to think about it. It didn't happen, so it doesn't work. But it was working because the law of attraction gives you what you expect and what you believe. And if you expect to have to, have to wait, you're going to have to wait. If you expect that it's not going to come, it's not going to come. So it's not just about thinking about something. It's about that expectation. And one of the things that's just really important is to let go. You know, let it be okay for whatever you want not to come. Just let it float away, and it will come back to you when it's time. Let the universe handle it. So that's, that's the first thing. The other thing that I think a lot of people um, underestimate is the importance of feelings and emotions. A lot of people get tied up, like I said before, into thoughts, that thoughts become things. But I think a really a better way to handle it is to worry about how you feel and your emotions. When we, are, when we project a feeling, we attract back more to us um, of whatever that feeling is. So let's say that you wanted to attract a soulmate, you know, a mate or a, a husband or a wife, a romantic partner of some sort. If having that partner would make you happy, then you have to project happiness in order to get the partner. It's very critical that you are able to get into a happy place. That way the universe can match where you are and bring you precisely what you want. So if I'm just thinking about a soulmate, but I'm not feeling good, I'm not projecting the feeling that's going to match what I need in order to attract that soulmate into my life. So feelings, and actually feelings are a lot easier to control than thoughts because it's very easy to understand how you're feeling. You just ask yourself, do I feel good or do I feel bad? Okay, I'm not feeling, not feeling good. Let me try and feel a little bit better. If you just do that over time, you're naturally going to start attracting to you more of the things that you want, more of the things that you're putting out into the universe. So those are the two things I would say definitely is that people hold on a little too tight to their dream and they don't put enough focus into getting into the feeling place of what they want, feeling good, finding, you know, thinking positive, feeling happy. That's a really critical part of success. Excellent answers. And um, I'm going to put a third one in there that I noticed I had to, I had to control myself from doing. And that Mm -hmm. is um, the expectation of how something was going to unfold for me. Oh, yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. I learned a huge expectations, you know, um, of, you know, you can ask for something, but then you say, then you give stipulations and conditions on how it's Mm unfolds. But I learned, I learned how this magic can occur um, when an and see in 2013 is when I got divorced from my husband and be- right before I left uh, him I had this this I don't know this talk to the universe and I'm actually probably right. just talking to myself and my cells and you know since the, since we are the universe <laughs> but right. <laughs> but I, I sat down and literally I mean I was crying and I just had this this I don't know, this heart-to-heart talk. And um, I just said, look, you know, I'm awake. I'm here. I'm ready to serve, but I need the right people in my life. And if my marriage is not supposed to, you know, to happen, then um, I need you to give me a sign that I need to move on. And sure enough, I got that sign. (laughs) And it wasn't the way that I expected either. It was was way different than I ever expected. But when the moment happened, I knew that would be the last day. I knew I had to leave that day. And not only that, but when I went to this conference here in Sarasota in October of 2013, I had absolutely no intentions whatsoever of meeting that person that I needed in my life. I had asked for it, and uh, I was willing willing to take a break and work for myself, and bam, it all happened at once. And I look back on it and go, whoa. 
now I see what it means to not try to control the way that things unfold right. and have expectations uh, because truly um, they do have a very good sense of humor as well and will make it as interesting and exciting as possible to That's surprise right. you However, in yeah. every way. Yeah. However so, you think it's supposed to happen, they can make it so much better. <laughs> so, yeah, and you're different. Right. You got to yeah. kind of let go of that. Absolutely. So, um, you know, we, we are programmed with this um, limiting belief system from a very young age. And I do believe that it mm-hmm. starts in school. And I know that you, you probably know a lot yeah. about that from being in education. Um, but what are some of the other uh, limitations or beliefs? Uh, because you know we're never taught we're never taught how to how to per, how to perform magic how to we're no. never taught that we live in a holographic illusion that was created out of light in order for us to have a physical uh manifestation and put a little piece of our soul into this body into this hologram we're not taught that our five senses are what is you know allowing us to experience this reality and that there's this sixth sense waiting for us so what are some of the uh beliefs and how how can we uh, how do you teach people to move past these programming beliefs that we have of this matrix yeah well, you know, I think it depends on what a what a person is trying to achieve and their own for some of these things and their particular set of circumstances. So, you know, like if somebody wanted to attract love, they may have a very specific set of things that they keep telling themselves that keep them from attracting love. And it kind of varies oh, that's from true. person to person, you know. Like on but TV, like they comments. want somebody that looks like the, the model on the television. Right. When if you look around right. your reality, 80% of the people don't look like that. <laughs> right, or more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's true. But, you know, there, so there's some common ones like that one, like, you know, I'm not attractive enough or all the good ones are taken or um, you can't trust men or you can't trust women. There's a lot of common ones out there that are shared by a good deal of the collective. Um, there's also individual ones, depending on how you were raised or your own specific limitations. On a, on a global level, I would say that probably the most limiting thing that we are taught being brought up is fear. And also a need to control. And I think that those are two things that really work against us. So a lot of people are operating out of a state of fear, that they're worried about what's coming next. Oh, if I do this, this might happen. If I do this, that might happen. And that's a very debilitating belief to carry when you're trying to create your reality. Because to create your reality, you just kind of have to go with it and just say, all right, let the chips fall where they may and be okay with it. You know, so trying to help people get over fear that's really important. And then also the trying to control, like you were mentioning before, the trying to control outcome. So many people have been taught that somehow they can force what they want into place. If they just get up early enough, if they just work out a little bit more, if they eat the right food, if they talk to the right people, if they say the right thing, that somehow everything is going to work out for them. And that's not at all how it works. So I think that's a very big limiting belief that lots of us carry. I know myself, especially um, when I started out on this journey, that was a big one that I had to work with was control. Yes, we're trying to control our awakening, aren't we, and how fast we're mm-hmm. going to get to the finish line. Oh, yes, Absolutely. I think we all have to go through that. And uh, I think a lot of people, if they just knew who they were, that you know that would that would be a yeah. huge thing in wiping away all of the beliefs that we've been taught because it seems like almost everything is absolutely backwards and almost everything we've been taught is a lie. So um it's it's a part of unlearning, you know, that's why I I really feel like it took me from 2010 till the middle of 2013 before I really felt like I even had a um a grip uh, of an understanding of what was happening, but I had no idea from 2013 through 2015 all the things that would unravel as far as um, archonic forces and uh, trickster beings and, you know, the things that were, you know, how thought forms can create uh, artificial intelligence (laughs) and things like that, that I had, 
you know, learned uh, going down that rabbit hole. But then yet again, you know, you can fall into that trap as well, because now you have this new belief system that there are archons on the planet when, in fact, everything is energy and you have to be really Mm -hmm. careful. It's a very psychological um, process in trying to make sure that you keep focused on some basic things like, we are all right. one, you know, we're one with the universe and to have unconditional love and to treat other people like you would like to be treated because if we're all one, whatever you do to somebody else, yeah. you're actually doing it to yourself. And to keep your right. vibrations raised and to learn how to, you know, con- uh, watch your thoughts like, you know, we like you were talking about in manifestation, but also that all, all these negative thought forms that we have, uh, every thought creates energy, which is a thought form, and those get um, put into the collective consciousness. And at one point on this planet, there were more negative thoughts than there were positive thoughts, and that right. that is what causes the darkness. So, yeah, so you know, kind of got a little deep there with that. But um, these are the, <laughs> these are things that you really um, learn on your spiritual yeah. awakening path, and I know that you've written about a lot of this stuff. Uh, to you know that that really gets gives you the bigger picture so that you can understand things um so right. with that being said um let's give our listeners a little bit of help in um manifestation for 2016 um i think one of the things <clears throat> that many people are um are hoping for is that this will be the year that we see some big changes in uh, our reality uh, on a collective Mm -hmm. level. You know, many of us are seriously not um, experiencing a lot of the things that we may see on social media on or on the television. As a matter of fact, you know, a lot of the things that are even on the television aren't even real. They're actually staged to promote that fear that you were talking about, to keep people in that belief system. But it's not happening in our backyard. It's not happening in our town. So, and, and, you know, unless you really witness it with your eyes, it really didn't happen, did it? You know, because this is a manufactured reality to begin with, um, that we witness things with our eyes. So it's kind of like, did if the tree fell in the forest, did it really fall? You know, if you didn't see it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So exactly. to witness it. So in 2016, a lot of people are um, really hoping to come together and manifest a new reality. I uh, know a lot of people are starting, are wanting to start um, to start working in um, the metaphysical and spiritual and healing industries. You know, as we move away from pharmaceutical, there'll be a lot of healers coming out. What kind of tips can you give people to manifest um, in 2016, these types of uh, exciting things? It's a really good question. And I think that the first thing to, to put into motion is just to ask, you know, if if you want to be a metaphysical healer, uh, work as a in, in you know holistic coach or anything of that nature, Put it out there. Be be willing to at least ask because first and foremost, a lot of times we feel like we can't ask for something that big because it's so far away from where we are in the moment. So be willing to ask. Even if you don't believe it right now, just put it out there. Ask for it. You know, say a prayer, write it down, but, but make it your intention. And then let it go. Okay, so a lot of times people hold on to their dreams, like I said before, and they think about them every day. They try to visualize them every day, and then they end up sending out that subconscious message that, oh, it's not coming, it's not coming, it's not coming, and that pushes the dream away. So instead of thinking about it too much, set your intention and then let it go, and then get on to your main job, and your main job is to get as positively minded and happy as you can. That's, that's my number one piece of advice. And the reason why is that, you know, when we are happy, we attract more things to us that make us feel happy. And when that starts to happen, reality starts to shift for us. And some people would call that, you know, like a process of ascension, where you're elevating yourself up into a a further dimension in reality, because you are of a higher frequency at that point. And things start going easier for you. Manifestations become easier for you. And when you climb up into that level and you start seeing how your emotions can translate into positive things for you, it becomes easier and easier for you to believe that you can manifest that thing that seems so far away. 
That's my number one suggestion. I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, do I need to make a vision board or do I need to do a visualization or do I need to meditate on this particular issue? I would just simply ask, let it go, and then make it my mission to be as positive as I can. Now, for some people, this is fairly easy because they're already fairly happy or they're in kind of a neutral um, emotional state. If, however, you're feeling kind of down or if you've been in in a lower emotional state, it might seem like a bit of a stretch. How am I supposed to be happy? I'm not happy right now. I'm angry. I'm pissed off. Things aren't going the way I want them to. You know, so that might seem like a bit of stretch. And if it does, if you're experiencing lower emotions and being happy seems like a bit of a stretch, that's okay. Don't reach for happy. Just reach for a little bit of relief. If you're feeling upset or if you're feeling negative, try to be as kind to yourself as possible and give yourself a little bit of relief. Be your own biggest uh, cheerleader. Be your own, you know, give yourself pep talks. Like, it's going to be okay. I'll get over this someday. It's all right. Everyone has bad days. Talk yourself out of that low mood as high as you can. And when you get a little higher, reach a little higher. And if you make that your daily routine of just always trying to climb a little bit higher, um, it becomes much easier to climb, climb the ladder, so to speak. And once you get into that place where you're sitting at a higher spot more frequently and you're attracting more of the things that you want, the believability quotient goes way up and it becomes a lot easier to manifest. So in 2016, if you're looking to, you know, blow this year out of the water, if you're looking to take things to the next level, make your happiness your priority. You can want the other things too. You can, you can want all the stuff in the world that you want. You can try and manifest it. But the number one priority, I think, is trying to get yourself into that pure energetic state of love and light, as they say, get yourself to that place where you're feeling very positive and uplifted. You're feeling oneness with all of humanity. If you can get into that zone, you're in the creation zone and you can create anything that you want. So that's, that's my biggest suggestion. That is like the perfect answer. I mean, I just had so many flashes of things when you were talking. I mean, the main thing is that as the earth raises her vibration, our vibration is being raised. And, you know, that's sometimes it does cause us to be um, a little down and depressed as we move through things that need to be transmuted. And so we have to forgive ourselves and not feel guilty for being in, you know, not the happiest of moods when some of us actually right. raised our hand and said, hey, I'll go down there and I'll transmute uh, for 5 million people. I'll transmute some, some energies for about a week, you know, every every <laughs> six months hit me with it, you know. So, <laughs> but see, you know, as you, as you said, the more you raise your vibration, the faster things can manifest in your reality because you're moving more towards that um, creation uh, ability. And so uh, raising your vibration is important for that reason, for sure. Right. And, um, Absolutely. Yeah. And so and you've written a lot of articles on uh, raising your vibration. And so um, I was wondering if you could just share um, – you know, you talked a little bit about being happy, but what are some of the things and suggestions that, you know, uh, nobody else can make us happy? That's the first thing that people have to to really understand. A lot of people are looking for love so that they can have someone else to fulfill them and make them happy. And that was one of the first things that I had to work on when I went through my dark night of the soul, when uh, I realized that the relationship I was in in 2013 wasn't um wasn't fulfilling what I needed. Uh, I needed to spend time on myself and realize that no one else, uh, no one else could make me happy but myself. So what are the, so I had to learn to raise my vibration, but what did you, what have you learned that, um, that you can use to raise your vibration? Well, there's lots of little tips. I think the first thing you said is so important, you know, so I want to, you know, expand on that just a little bit because, You know, so often how we feel is a reaction to what's going on in our reality right here and right now. And so if someone's mean to us, we feel bad. If someone's nice to us, we feel good. And so we allow our vibration to be manipulated by what's going on around us. And so if we've managed to wander into a lower vibration and we're in a reality that isn't the best and we're not particularly happy about it, 
it just kind of feeds on itself because we keep reacting to the crap that's around us. One of the things that I think is just so important is understanding that your your emotions and your feelings can be manipulated. That's the first thing I think people really need to understand is that you have the ability to take yourself from a lowered emotional state to a higher one. And, and if you're depressed or if you're really down on the bottom, it isn't going to happen right away. But you have the ability to climb up little by little. Okay, so – That's the first thing. Instead of just reacting to what's going on, if you find yourself feeling negative about what's going on in your reality, you can make a choice that, you know what, today I'm just going to worry about being happy. Today I'm just going to worry about, you know, this this other stuff, I can worry about this later. It's more important that right now I get to a better feeling place. Now, in order to do that, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, Some people respond really well with music. Um, depending on the kind of music that you're listening to. And I'm sure that, you know, you've probably had this experience. Lots of people have had this experience where you're listening to a piece of music and you, you can feel it and it gives you goosebumps. <laughs> it makes you happy. Yeah. And that's honestly, I think that's probably one of the easiest things that you can do, but be careful with your music choices because if you're like, in a, if you're in a, if you're down in the dumps, chances are you're going to be more inclined to reach for the music. That's the angry music <laughs> or the sad music or the crying mm-hmm. music. So be very very conscious about the choices that you're making. If you're feeling down, go into your collection. Find what's the one song that always makes me happy when I hear it. Put that song on. That will help you. That will help you climb up the level a little bit. Um, another thing is movement. When we are in motion, our natu- our energy is naturally traveling at a faster rate, and that helps us to feel a little bit more energized and a little bit better. This doesn't mean that you need to go run a marathon or do anything crazy, um, but, you know, you could go for a walk. You could do some yoga. You could go for a drive. But just do something to get your body moving across the plane of space. That will help you. Um, Colors. Colors can be very helpful. Colors are on a frequency scale, just like a vibrational, vibrational frequency scale where colors that are at the bottom level of the, the chakras, like your browns, blacks, and reds, are your slower-moving energy. So if you're not feeling particularly um, upbeat in a given day, I would probably avoid wearing those particular colors. I'd work my way up the scale and try to put on something that was blue or something that was yellow or something a little bit higher up there to help lift your spirits a little bit. And I think everyone's probably seen that when you're depressed, you're more likely to wear black. You're more white, likely to wear the, the grays, the dark, the dark colors, um, that's very likely. So you can work against that by choosing different colors in your wardrobe. Um, the other thing that I think is just such a great idea is just monitoring the way that you speak. So many times we spend so much time talking about the things that we don't like, complaining about our problems. Uh, and, you know, it still happens to me too. It's a very addictive thing where you just kind of get wrapped into the negativity. Um but if you're in a down place, make a choice. I, I'm going to talk about only the things I want to talk about. And if I feel negative, I'm just going to be quiet, okay? I'm not going to say it because once you say it, you add momentum to it, and it makes you feel worse. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do. I could go on for, for hours, but hopefully that's a few <laughs> a few things to help people out with. Yes, and also I think the major other thing that I would add to that is um, – to assess uh, what you're putting in your mouth, you know, what you're eating mm. and what you're drinking, and uh, to make sure that you're trying, you know, we you, you mentioned that a little bit earlier, and we can't all be, you know, perfect here because, you know, not all of us can run out. It, some people don't even have an organic store. So a lot of people don't have gardens in their backyard. But just do the best you can and, and be mindful of definitely, you know, cutting out processed foods and sodas and, you know, try not to drink a lot of alcohol or do any drugs, you know, things like that. Uh, Cause those yeah. things are, are designed and engineered to lower your vibration. So, and that's something that you do every single day. So, um, yeah. you know, there's a lot of information on, on, on uh, body, mind, soul, com about, you know, how you can assess what's right for your body because not everybody is the same. Um, and I right. do, I do really like the, the point that you had about basically um, dealing with what's in front of you right now and staying in the now and then, you know, not worrying about pushing some things off if they don't have to be done right this moment, let them go. And sometimes they work out, they work out magically uh, for themselves. Exactly. And um, 
I wanted to make the point that brought uh, that uh, when you were talking uh, that I thought of our body uh, actually, you know, it has consciousness. It is mostly made of water, and this, our cells hear us. And so we're talking about uh, careful what we say because you know that's really a, a, one of our tools in manifestation. And so if we say how sick we are of some such and such, or we're so tired of this or that and the other, then our body hears us and says, okay, I'm going to get sick now. Okay, well, I'm tired yeah. now, you know. So, yeah, yeah, that's very important. So those are some really good signs. And, uh, you know, I encourage everybody, like I said, to to look. I put the, uh, the link to your search page on N5D in the chat room to check out some of your articles. And really, people, this is not about listening to what we have to say and believing us. We encourage you to do your own research and to really try these things out for yourself. And uh, to see, you know, how how you feel, and to to, to make your own uh, assessment of of what should be done. Um, now, and you have an article uh, about testing your vibrations using the four signs of the universe. So, could let's just touch on that because I'm really into this vibrational thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how does one uh, do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, in that article, what I was trying to do was to give people some ideas of if you're interested in raising your vibration, you know, it, it's really useful to be constantly going back and checking, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Because you want to know, am I, am I in that high vibrational state? Am I in that process of attraction? Or am I in that lower vibrational state where I'm in a process of moving away from the things that I want? So there's a few things that you can do. There's actually tons of things that you can do, but I condensed it down into a list of four. Um, The first thing that I recommend is just doing what I call a reality check. And this means that just look around and see what is happening right now in my reality. Um, Is traffic going smoothly for me or am I sitting behind a five-car pileup? You know, yes, um, that is my, so you know, true. Exactly. Is my husband being nice to me or are we having a big, you know, knock him down, drag him out fight? Now, it, that's a very polarized examples. But if you kind of look at your reality and just see what all is going on right now and how do I, you know, how does this make me feel? Am I, am I pretty pleased with the way that this is going or am I fairly irritated or annoyed or upset? Um, that's a very good gauge of where you are because you're always landing precisely where your vibration is. So if you're in a place where everything is going lovely, everyone's being nice to you, good things are happening, you're having a good hair day, all of that, you can be pretty assured that your your vibe is running pretty high. Okay, so that's the first thing I recommend. Um, Another thing, and I've always been kind of perplexed by this one, but I heard about it many years ago, and it's been very true in my experience, Um, but it's repeating numbers. And lots of people that are savvy to spiritual awakening are all excited about repeating numbers, you know. So the 111s, the 1111s, the 1234s, the 333s, um, for me at least, when I can tell that I'm in a higher, you know, vibrating place, I see them all day long. I see them all the time. I see them on the clocks. I see them on license plates. I see them on my fuel gauge in my car. They're all over the place. Um, when I'm feeling like crap, I, I don't see them anywhere, you know. So for me, that's always been a good sign. I've heard that's a very good sign for lots of people. And the only way that, you know, I'm not particularly knowledgeable on numerology per se. The way that I've always reconciled it in my mind is that this is a mathematically based universe. And so to me, you know, this is just kind of signs that the universe is sending to you mathematically, although there may be a very different reason for that. But that's something I've heard of a lot. It's definitely true for me. I've seen it for other people. So if it's happening to you, I would take it as a sign. Um, The next thing, what was it? Oh, monitoring your emotions. We've already talked about how your emotions are very important. If you happen to be someone who's fairly you know, empathic or someone who's very in tune with your emotions, this is a good one to use because you can be very aware of, oh, this makes me feel good, this makes me feel bad. I'm somebody who's like super aware of my emotions and sometimes it's a blessing and sometimes it's a curse, but I know when I feel good and when I feel bad. And so that's a very good gauge for me. Some, type, some people it's a little less intense, um, but your feelings, are you happy, or excited, or are you sad, or are you depressed? Um, that's a good thing to help you determine where you're at. And then the last thing is your body. How is your body feeling? 
Um, you know, do you feel that for you, you're in a relatively good health? Do you feel like you feel pretty good physically compared to where you use, usually are? Or do you feel, you know, sluggish? Or do you feel that perhaps there's some unusual illnesses or injuries that are cropping up? Um, that often happens when we're in a lower vibration. And what you'll start to see is if you use these four signs in tandem, you'll really see that they really do line up. You know, you're seeing 11-11s on those days that you're relatively happy, on those days that you're in a pretty good mood, your body's in a pretty good shape. Um, they tend to go hand in hand. But you can use any of them, you know, whichever one works works for you. Thank you. And I just want to mention to anybody who's in the queue, if you're listening to the show, hi. Uh, if you would like to speak to us, be sure and press 1 to put your hand up, and we'll take your call. Uh, right now I don't have anybody's hand up. I do want to mention a couple of things. One is that Greg had a dream. Uh, he has prophetic uh, prophetic dreams, and he's every now and then he'll have a vision. And he had a dream either last night or the night before the last that um, basically in his life, and I assume in mine as well because I was in it, we've pretty much done everything that we need to actually do, you know, like having to do something or what we came to do. We've fulfilled what we came here to do um, probably a, a long time ago. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, but the, the message was just to be happy and just to have fun. You know, make sure that you be that you're that you're happy and that you're having fun. And um, I know I when I uh, I've had several psychic readings. I'm a I'm a psychoholic, and um, <laughs> <laughs> because I always like to get messages from my guides and from the universe. And the one thing that they always come back and tell me through different psychics that I've never heard before, and it's always the same thing. And it's lighten up. You know, make sure yeah. that you're not taking life too seriously right now. Um, you know, when we pop out of this body on the other side, um, we totally forget, you know, what it was like to be stuck in this dense body. And we realize it was just a game. And that's right. a really good way, you know, if you want to pull back and look at things from a very objective standpoint, that's a really, that's that's one of the tools I use, that this is just a game. Although, yes, it's an important game. Um, you know, that's what, what uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of beings who have um, passed over to the other side will come back and tell you that this is simply a game and you, at this point, mm. the best thing you can do is work on yourself and loving yourself and being happy. So yeah, um, it's funny because I, I was actually I was actually writing about something about that today. So it's just really funny that you would bring that up. That I was writing about, you know, why it's important to be happy right now. And one of the reasons that I put down for there is that you know there are no winners and losers. You know, we're all we're all mm -hmm. ultimately heading to the same. We're all heading to the same place. <laughs> we're all gonna, like you mm -hmm. said, get pushed out onto the other side at some point. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter if you get everything you want or if you don't. You have a you know good time or a bad time. Doesn't matter if you get that promotion or you don't. It really doesn't matter. You're just rolling through this and you're going to come out the other end. So you might as well have fun with it. You know. So it's, it's funny to me that you would mention that because that's pretty much verbatim what I was writing about today. On my blog. <laughs> that's great. Well, I'm just you know I'm tapped into that ether. So you know if you're using it, I'm going to pick up on it. So um, let me ask you this question. Um, I found myself doing this, um, striving so hard to want to make sure that I did everything possible to raise my vibration that I found myself realizing that I was uncomfortable in my own skin. My vibration was actually too high, meaning that mm. it was I was doing things that were making me uncomfortable and feeling mm. the need to... Uh, immediately need to eat something to ground myself. Have you have you come yeah. across that? Um, yeah, honestly, um, I have heard of this. You know, sometimes, like for me, like vertigo. <laughs> yeah, that I gotta like, I gotta calm down. <laughs> like, you can step down off the meditation for a minute, come back to earth. It's fine. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because here's the thing, we. We are like these spiritual beings, like you said, we're in the ether, so to speak. But to have this this experience, we have to kind of come down to a level that's capable of even perceiving, 
you know, things that are in a third dimension, which are much slower, much, you know, slower moving. And so if you get too high, it just, it doesn't work necessarily. Like you are here. You can't, you can't fly off into heaven right this moment. <laughs> you still have exactly. to be here. <laughs> and sometimes that's a little disappointing because it would be more fun to just fly off. But if you remember that that's where you're headed anyway, you know, it's a little easier to swallow that pill, I think. That's that's true. Well, how about we how about we take a phone call? Would that be all right with you? Mhm. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. So, area code 702, welcome to the Cosmic Awakening show. Hang on. We I think my computer is being a little bit slow. It's hung up on that. That's not good. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's okay. So, yeah, that's not working. I'm sorry, area code 702. Maybe it'll stop spooling here in just a moment. Okay, well, let me try this. Area code 941. Wow, this is interesting. I'm sorry, I'm not able to um, bring both of you on. Am am I on the air? Okay, Okay. you're on now. Yay. How about me? Am I on the air? First, first time uh, caller yeah. here. Uh, okay, hang on just a second. Um, area code three two one. If you could just hang on just a moment, and I will grab you in just a second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> area code nine four one. First time caller here. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Greg. <laughs> Greg Prescott <laughs> from N five D snuck in snuck in there when I couldn't get the first caller on. Uh, hi, Greg. <laughs> Sorry, first caller. <laughs> no, hi, I, I think it's my just... computer. Hi, Andrea. Oh, Andrea dropped now. Oh, no. <laughs> That's <laughs> Hey, you called in just at the right moment. Here she is. <laughs> Wait. Um, hi, who's this? Area Hello? code 702. Hi, who's, who is hi. this, please? Hello. Oh, hi. Are you just listening? Um, yeah, I'm just listening. Okay, thank you. Hi, Heather. Hmm, okay, let me look down. Oh, here she is, I think. Yeah, okay, I got her. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> hey, I have a guest. I have a caller for you, Andrea. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. Andrea, are you there? Hmm, interesting. Andrea, can, we can't hear you. Is your phone maybe on mute or? Hmm. Hello. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, we got a now different I have person now. Talking. Wow. <laughs> this is... Wait a second. Can you hear me yet or no? We can hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, you can All hear right. me. I was the first caller that. You are through. the first caller. This is like <laughs> a the three ring right. circus. What's your name, uh, uh, Eric? Seven zero two. This is Aaron Gregory. Hi, Aaron. I'll go ahead and let you talk, Aaron. Yeah, I, I just wanted to let you guys know I am enjoying your show. I was just going to ask you if you would un, unban me from your chat room. I was saying seven's the best number in craps. I live in Las Vegas. I just missed the S at the end. I wasn't cussing <laughs> in your room. <laughs> I, I, got sure, kicked out and I, I sure will. I thought I had somebody in there talking about crap, and you meant to type in <laughs> craps. <laughs> Yeah, I was in Las Vegas. That's area code 702. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, anyway, thanks all right. for the show. Uh, I sure right. will, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, hang on just a second. Let me, um, Greg, let me look for Andrea's number here. Sure. Just hang on with me, Andrea. Well, in the meanwhile. I think you know, we have hey, Andrea. Is that Welcome okay. back. Is that Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Welcome back. Sorry about that. We had a little technical difficulty. That was a fun little adventure we just had there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't so. say hi to Greg yet. I said hi to Greg like five times. But hi, Greg. Aww. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing wonderful, Andrea. Thanks for uh, all your wonderful, amazing articles. I got to say that you are one of my favorite authors out there, period. Okay. You know, I've got like a handful of, that, of them that are just, I hold 
high above everyone else, and you're one of them because the articles that you write are just, they're perfect. <laughs> Everything about them is perfect. And, uh, you know, it, it's its almost, almost like I'm reading an article that I, I could have wrote myself. You know? and I'm, I'm not <laughs> trying to tell t- myself. I'm not saying saying I'm not great, but... but Man, your article. No, you're pretty. Perfect. You're pretty. You're pretty good too. So <laughs> oh, I've, always, thank you. I've always loved in 5D, and I I do appreciate all your support. You've been a a huge help well, to me. So thank you. That that's very touching. I appreciate it. I always always look forward to your articles each week, and uh, I I thoroughly enjoy sharing them with the world on both in 5D and BodyMindSoulSpirit.com. Yeah. Thank um, you I, so much. My pleasure. Honestly. Um, Got a couple questions for you. First one mm-hmm. is actually a psychology question. Sure. Because myself, I, I was a child and family therapist before I got into this, and I found it very amazing how many people in the psychology world are actually into spirituality and metaphysics. Mm-hmm. Um, matter of fact, I'll be releasing an article related to this question, this first question, and it is um, out of all the. Um, influential uh, psychological personalities out there, which ones are your favorites? Like um, young boys? You know, yeah, because of my spiritual interest, I would have to say, um, you know, like Carl Jung, um, I think would be would be probably the big one for me. You know, Freud, Freud's fun too. Um, and also I really love behaviorism and I think, you know, if if you love behaviorism, you have to be excited about Eric Erickson um, mm-hmm. and developmental, ch- you know, how children grow up and how they behave and what they're taught. Um, who else? You know, those are those are two big ones. Um, you know, I just really I love any anyone who really speaks to what we are going through and how mm-hmm. we can make it better, um, how we can teach people to be, you know. How we can kind of impart, I don't know, behaviorism is like one of the, the things that I think is just the coolest because it, it teaches us how we can kind of manipulate our own um, behaviors to create desired results. So that's mm-hmm. one of the things that I, I really, really love. I love Carl Jung because of, you know, the whole concept of the collective unconscious and this idea, like to me when I first learned about that, it completely blew my mind. I never would have thought about yeah. anything like that. But this idea that like, there's these big thoughts that everyone has that you can kind of tap into them. That was just wild to me. Now it, it totally makes sense. But to me, I thought that was, that was really um, inspiring when I learned about that in college. So, yeah, he's definitely you know, one of every, the big ones. And every time we talk about 1111, we can thank Carl Jung for coining the term synchronicity. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. That's absolutely true. Yes, we can thank mm-hmm. him for that as well. And synchronicity is something that's, you know, it's like a part of your life now, and you so it's it's exciting. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you know myself, I, I love uh, Albert Bandura, who was the uh, person that came up with the first the theory of modeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh-huh. and, and modeling yeah. how children model the behavior of parents. I love that because essentially yeah. we're just mirroring and reflecting one another, um, and that's yep. how we grow spiritually. So I, I found that that to be very uh, interesting in the spiritual metaphysical world in that application. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I also, <laughs> you probably, I, I don't know if you're familiar with him or not, uh, George Kelly, he was known as the mm-hmm <laughs> therapist because he'd sit and listen and he would just go, mm-hmm, and then there'd be this long blank silence and eventually the uh, person that, that, that um, he was talking to would eventually talk more and it, it was not even oh. having him to probe any further into um, saying anything else. He would just go, mm-hmm. So a lot of times you'll hear me on Inside D Radio, radio, and you'll hear me say, mm-hmm. <laughs> "Yep, just wait. That, that if you was... wait, I'll give it to you." <laughs> and that, that you know, they do that. Him. They do that in sales too. They teach that in sales. I used to way before I became a teacher. I worked in sales for a while, and that was one of the things that they taught you: is you know, the first person who speaks loses. So you let that person just sit back, and they'll get uncomfortable, and and they'll start talking, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> It's totally and true. And they can thank it's George Kelly for that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably where they that's got it from. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, I'm I'm sure you're familiar with the Myers Briggs personality test. Oh yeah, I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me too. I'm curious, what are your letters? Um, yeah, I'm I'm supposedly the strangest one. I'm an INFJ. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am introvert. I'm not 
super high on the introverted scale. I would say I'm probably a moderate introvert, very mm-hmm. intuitive, um, you know, judgmental too, absolutely, mm-hmm. <laughs> unfortunately. But, yeah, that's that's my type. And I noticed, what were you? You were, I know you had posted this at one point. You were, very I know close. it was an INFJ. Was it an INFP INFP. or something? Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. Yeah. And Michelle is too. Yeah, we're both INFPs. Um, I, I, I'm I like the self-proclaimed world's biggest introvert. <laughs> yeah, that's and, good. You know, that's good. <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't think it, you know, because, you know, I, I do radio and I've got this website and stuff like that. But honestly, Michelle can attest to this. I'm a huge, mm-hmm. huge introvert. If there was a big party yep. going on, chances are I wouldn't go to it, number one. But if I yeah. did, <laughs> I'd be in the bathroom. In the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be in the corner of the room watching everybody. That's right. I take lots of bathroom breaks. I leave early. I go outside. <laughs> I talk to the pets. You know? Yes. <laughs> I'm that yes. person at the party. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the misconception about introverts, though, is that we have nothing to say. But it's really just we're in our own mind, you know. We're, mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, you've created this big website and all these great things is because your mind is working. You're out there making yeah. things happen. You know, it's just going on internally. That's that's the difference. Well, the fascinating thing about introverts, um, and they say that, you know, that, and there's varying different uh, percent, percentages, but um, the vast majority of people are extroverts. And, of course, we've been socially conditioned to be ex- extroverts. When you look at commercials on TV, you see all these right. people laughing and smiling, and they're all always beautiful, and they're having a great time. They're all extroverts, you know. <laughs> Where's the right. introverted commercials? You don't see them. <laughs> they're no, not out there. Sure but, <laughs> but what what it boils down to is the introvert is more likely, obviously, to go within for approval <laughs> versus the extrovert who look, seeks for uh, energy from exterior, uh, exterior sources. And... Uh, I, I did a, a poll on M5D, and uh, I'll be re- releasing an article tonight on uh, introverts. But And this poll will be at the end of the article. But as of today, 81% of people that responded to this poll on a spiritual, metaphys- spiritual metaphysical website are introverts. I found that very, yeah. very fascinating. It is, isn't it? I mean, I'm not particularly yeah. surprised. Um, because I think when you get into this world, it's kind of a rabbit hole of information and ideas, and it's. I think it takes a lot of um, focus mm-hmm. to process into that kind of information. Um, yes. And sometimes, you know, extroverts are really great at, they're great at talking, sociability, they're easy at words coming fluidly to them. Um, yeah. But when it comes to, like, sitting down and deeply focusing on something, that's not particularly interesting to them. So I'm not no. entirely surprised that you would have more of an introvert audience with that. <laughs> um, you know, in fact, I was thinking about this. I'm like, you know, I would not be surprised if the majority of people who run websites um, and do the things that we do are introverts because it really is one of those, uh, you know, areas where you have to sit down and focus and kind of shut down and get in the zone. And introverts are very good at doing that. Oh, that, we have no problem doing that. <laughs> yes, we are. And we like to do that. <laughs> well, you know, and, and just on a closing note, one time uh, Heidi Cole and I had a radio show on introverts and extroverts. And because pr- mm-hmm. our primary um, listening audience are is basically comprised of introverts, not surprisingly, we didn't have any phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Same problem we're having tonight. <laughs> We had so many people in the chat room and so many people that were listening. You know, you can see the numbers oh, yeah. up there, but no, nobody was calling oh, in. I, just I have never, funny. I have never called into a radio show ever, not once in my life. So. You know, and I have in the I'm past, and then I, I would hang up before they would get me on the air, or they say like, uh, area code, whatever. You know, yeah, I'm uh, nope, nope, yep. <laughs> can't do it. Yeah, I like the chat rooms. That's where that's where I hang out. So I get it. So yeah. hi to all the introverts. <laughs> we hear you. <laughs> we got lots of them. <laughs> well, once mm-hmm. again, thank you so much for all your articles. I look forward to you uh, submitting your next ones. And from, from here forever on, I can't wait. You're, you're you're such a wonderful addition to N5D, and I'm very very grateful that uh, to have you aboard as one of our contributing writers. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. And it's so nice to talk to you tonight. Thanks so much for calling. My pleasure. 
Take care. Thank you, Greg. Great night. You too. You're welcome. Bye. 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 Well, that's a surprise. Being an introvert, I honestly didn't think he would call. <laughs> I know. That's so that's, it's always great to hear from Greg. And uh, so I just wanted to, uh, I did ask in the chat room if anybody has a question for um, Andrea or if you have a comment, um, go ahead and post it now. And if you are listening and you would like to uh, speak to us, be sure and press 1 to put your hand up so I know and I'll Hopefully we won't have that uh, same kind of problem we had a minute ago. <laughs> Maybe it was the operator. I don't know. So um, what I did want to – I have a couple, just a couple of questions, and we're going to wrap things up here. And I was just wondering if you would like to explain um, how the law of attraction has impacted the mass consciousness. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um you know, one thing that I think is important to understand is that as, as you know, we're like you were saying before, we're all part of this one. You know, some people would call it God or all that is or source energy or whatever you name you put on it. We're all part of this one. And we're all kind of like the eyes and ears of it, you know. Um, if one of us is thinking a particular thought, we have a lot of power to, to manifest and create in our own realities. But if you add several of us into that equation or hundreds of us or thousands of us or millions of us thinking the same exact thought, we amplify it a whole lot. And so I think that's really important to understand is that some of the thoughts that are out there and that are in beliefs that are being expressed have kind of run amok and have taken over a big part of the herd. (laughs) And even Mm -hmm. though they seem really, really, really powerful they aren't necessarily accurate and they aren't necessarily beneficial. They aren't necessarily going to help you achieve the things that you want to achieve. So I think part of this journey, at least for me, has been in learning to question, you know, when I'm seeing things on television, when I'm reading things on social media, when people are having water cooler talk, you know, I need to evaluate what's being said and really decide if I want to become a part of that conversation. If I really want to let, that belief become my belief, or if it is already my belief, if I want to continue perpetuating that belief. Um, So like one of the big things I'm really big on is, you know, watch out for the news. And I think you mentioned this before. A lot of the news is, you know, it's crap. It isn't helping you out. Um, A lot of it is, is probably fake, like you were saying before. But all of us can agree that if you turn on the news, you aren't seeing any good news. Like you may see one like positive story per every 15 (laughs) of like death, 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 destruction, problems, homicides, you know, genocides. It's so much negativity and it, and it leads you to believe that the world is a very fearful and despicable place. And when you're in that place of fear, you're detached from your ability to create the things that you want. So you know, you have to be aware of the fact that you know, when there's groups of people getting together thinking the same thought, it amplifies. It becomes a bigger thought. There becomes more evidence to it. And it actually takes a lot of conscious direction to move yourself away from that thought process, to think, okay, you know what, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go think about something else. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to stop following this particular, you know, page on Facebook or whatever it is that is bringing in these beliefs, Um that are making you feel negative or that are helping you move in a direction that you don't want to move in. You are just amazing. I just love, I mean, it's, I feel like sometimes that you're, that it's me when you talk that it's me. (laughs) It's amazing. And I have, yeah, I just have, um, I have one confession to make to, to my listeners tonight. And um, that is when I went through the phase of going down the rabbit hole of, learning about the dark side uh, earlier this year and uh, Cameron Day's uh, article, uh, Why I Am No Longer a Light Worker. And although I never really um, got into uh, deep into Mark Passio's work, you know, he, he had a lot to say about light workers and how uh, the New Age agenda is about um, – uh, being passive and love and light, and how yeah. that that we need to you know uh, to 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 do. And you know, I have to say, I I really have come full circle, and perhaps I needed to study that stuff 
to have an aha moment and I am back at square one where I am now saying, you know, there is absolutely love and light is the way to go. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, know this sounds, <laughs> I know this just sounds, you know, um, bizarre, but, <clears throat> you know, I think there's just, there's a lot of disinfo in the campaign against the new age religion as well. So, um, I've seen both sides of the fence, and I think what has really been created is a situation where people um, are just being pitted against each other. And so, oh, we goodness, need so to, true. To, to, yeah, we need to recognize so these true. situations and honor the path that everyone is walking and honor everyone's decisions and uh, not think that we know the, the way. If anybody out there tells you this is the way something should be period you need to run as fast as you can and when people start Mm -hmm. getting into name calling and really putting other people down that people that's negative energy negative vibrations so um you know that's not what we're after here we are all after raising our vibration and being able to manifest uh, with the law of attraction um, what we need to uh, finish out what we need to do here because if you're like me, uh, you don't want to come back. You want to go ahead and get it done in this lifetime. (laughs) I don't know about you, Andrea, but I'm not coming back. Oh, I I hear you. (laughs) That's funny. Well, as we wrap up. No, I hear that a lot. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to wrap up. That's all. No, go ahead. You're good. Okay. Well, we don't have anybody else in the queue, and um, we've. I, I I think what happens a lot of times is that we answer everyone's questions. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was just wondering if you would um, give us a description of your website and what kind of services that you offer. Yeah, sure. Um, the website that I run it's called RaiseYourVibrationToday.com. And on that website, there's lots of tips on how to raise your vibration. There's also a daily blog that's updated Monday through Friday. Um, there's also a members area with additional resources like video tutorials and ebooks, audiobooks, um, one-on-one support, all that good stuff. Um, besides that, uh, you can also reach me there if you're interested in law of attraction coaching and or group events. Um, that's basically what I'm offering. Actually, a week from Saturday, if you ha- I know we have a lot of, like, we're in the Florida area, area, so I'm assuming there's probably some Florida listeners. If you happen to be in the Jensen Beach or Fort Pierce, Port St. Lucie area, um, I'm actually going to be in Jensen Beach a week from Saturday giving a free Law of Attraction seminar at Ohana, um, Ohana Tree Massage and Yoga. So if that's something any viewers are interested in attending, You can always look me up on Raise Your Vibration today and shoot me um, an email or a contact, and we'd be happy to put you on the guest list for that event. Um, But, yeah, lots of stuff on Raise Your Vibration today about raising your vibration, the law of attraction, um, how to get focused in the positive and start attracting the things that you want in life. It's been a great pleasure to have you on the show, to hear your voice, to hear your vibration, and um, I sure – I'm looking forward to uh, having an N5D meetup with you somewhere in the Orlando area this year. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Sounds great. Have a good rest of your evening, Andrea. I really appreciate you coming on the show. You too, Michelle. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye now. All right. Bye-bye. And I just wanted to let everybody know about our guest next week. I'm really excited to bring on Zoran Hochstadter. And he is a true Jedi. Um, He is a pure bioenergy healing teacher and practitioner. Greg and I took level one class from Zoran. And um, I really am looking forward to my level two class in Austin at the end of this month. He's also a keynote speaker at our conference coming up February 20th. Uh, Here in Sarasota, Florida, you can check out www.n5devents.com. And I'm going to wrap up the show tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been a wonderful show talking about positive law of attraction and how to change your reality through manifestation. Good night, everyone. Mm -hmm. 